I'm awesome. very involved. My brain is very involved with like current events and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I just like, I couldn't even come on today because of what happens, what's happening in Israel. Like, oh, oh my God. You're but like, but I am Armenian. So that kind of stuff, I have family over there and stuff like, no, not just tell. Israel, but I had dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this is Amigos PC. If you were looking for a highbrow, fancy, smart, regal podcast with hosts that love to talk about horse riding, badminton, and trips to the vineyard, you're in the wrong place. This is Amigos PC. If you're looking for drinking, random nonsense, stunts, shenanigans, and balls out craziness, you've hit the jackpot. This is Amigos PC, and this is Scott and Mark. Speaking <laughs> of thirst, the Amigos are live. Sort of. Uh, we have a guest today, Dave Sierra. He hosts the. Did I say it wrong? Did I fuck it up? Dave Sarah, it's okay. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, I already messed it up. <laughs> it's okay. And by the way, that is a very token thing of me that I do regularly with most of our guests. I've even called one of our guests by her Twitter handle, which was kind of funny. Didn't even mean to. It just started rolling out because that's all I see on the on when interacting with her basically but yeah you manage host or you all you do a podcast of deegan.net and then you also have comedy stains which is featured on youtube can you give us a little bit of insight and background and Hell how yeah. you do that yeah i do a podcast with uh co-host uh corky from the ding dong show he's one of uh, don barris's acolytes and I, I should say he's one of his prophets now no but we do a show together and it's kind of just like a silly adult like a silly adults doing silly things it doesn't really get too controversial we usually just like to talk about stuff that's happening in the comedy community and we try to get as many comedians and stand-ups and open micers in as possible we've only done a few episodes but also do yeah dj and den so you can go to dj and den.net it'll take you right to my youtube channel right now you can watch it's a, it then is just like it's everything it's just it's legal and illegal drug use it's conspiracy <laughs> theories it's sports it's whatever the fuck that you do in your degenerate den. So that's all it is. But yeah, Dave, Sarah, you know where to find me. Nice. I, we, we're kind of connected in one way when it comes to the podcasting world because uh, we have a friend of the show, your Wander Wizard, Kel Kelsey Davis, right? No, not Dave. Damn it. Kelsey uh, Hutchins. 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 Yeah. yeah, Kelsey Hutchins. Uh, yep, the Yonder Wizard. We've had him on our show. We've been on his show, interact with him on a regular yeah, basis. He yeah, dude, he's such Fucking, a good um, phenomenal mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys meet we met on <clears throat> we're both fans of kill tony so uh, when they took away the the voice chat the when they took away the live chat from the kill tony live shows that kind of brought like a, a generation of uh, oops, my video cut out so anyway that kind of brought like a generation of people to discord and then we eventually like from the reddit channel the reddit kill tony channel they made a discord channel we jumped in there and then that's been growing and we've just been friends ever since. I went out and visited him in South Carolina. I met him in Austin. We went to a Kill Tony show together. We both got on. That was very fun. I went to South Carolina, visited him. We did a show out there. That was awesome. I hadn't done a show. I hadn't done a stand-up show in more than a year. And uh, I did a little, I, I, I cheated a little bit and I kind of did like this hacky thing where I wrote down jokes on like cue cards. Okay. And I was like, and plus I didn't know how late it was going to be and i'm on vacation so i'm don't want to be shit faced by the time the show starts which is like nine o'clock and because i'm bad when i'm <clears throat> drunk or high or whatever i can't do it so so i wrote down the cards just to make sure that i can get through my set like 10 minutes if i have to and i just and i wasn't sure how the crowd was going to be so it was kind of an out, i kind of use it as an out like oh i found these cards outside oh so uh if uh, it says anything offensive, it wasn't me. It's the person who left them outside, you know? It's like, nah. just, so I played that whole thing, but it, it ended up going really well. The funny thing about that show too, is that there was this guy, I don't remember his name now. <clears throat> He's probably like 21, 22 years old. Looked so much like Pete Davidson. He had like the blonde hair and everything. It looked a lot like him. He comes up 
and uh, I guess he'd been working at the liquor store that was providing the alcohol for the bar that we were doing the show at. And Kelsey used to perform at this bar, uh, not perform, used to frequent this bar, but he's been sober for a long time now. Wow. So, so, but he knows all those people. So he set up the gig and it ended up being, you know, me, Will, Mumford Davis, Yonder, Kelsey, and then this kid just shows up and he's like, hey, is this where the, uh, the show's gonna be? Yeah, blah, blah. And he's telling us like, oh, I'm from New York and I've been doing uh, mics and blah, blah, blah. He's like, do you think? And then I'd even like, I was like, yeah, all right, you can get five minutes after me, I told him. And Kelsey was a little like pissed off about that just because I like, went up and be yeah. up like above his, he's just like, oh yeah, this is your show now. I'll just fucking yeah. put anybody else. Like I'm the one who has to live with these people, dude, not you. So I, so I've learned to never cross the Yonder Wizard anymore on, on those types. So I let him like do, you know, I let him handle the shit that he's supposed to handle. Yeah. So, but this kid ended up coming up, dude, and holy fucking shit, he murdered. It was incredible how good he was. Dude. He had a tight 10 and it just killed. And the whole time I'm sitting next to Kelsey, sorry. I'm sitting next to Kelsey and I'm like, this motherfucker, he's making us look bad. Look at this ringer, like just enamored <laughs> by just how hard he was killing in there, dude. And, uh, but this show ended up being great. And so, yeah, I mean, that's like the last time I saw him. But yeah, Kelsey's the shit, man. We, yeah. you know, he's a moderator on the Kill Discord, you know, Discord channel, which is yeah. killdiscord.com. So that's our one of the big things that we do. We do a podcast there too for After Kill Tony. We do like a shoot. It used to be kind of like a podcast where we review the comedians on Kill Tony. Like an but that just show. started getting, yeah, that just started getting like redundant and boring to say the least. Yeah. So I mean, we just kind of shoot the shit, yeah. You can only like review a, a piece of shit again, I guess. Oh, you, you, know, it's you, true. A, you can only put a bow on a piece of shit so it's many true. times. It's true. It's true. And then, and then we even try like, oh, let, let's try to highlight the good ones. Yeah. And then it turns out, all right, let's try to shit on them. And then it's like, in the end, it's like, nobody wants to hear us. Why are we going to be picking on these motherfuckers? We should be trying to get them in and at least trying to get them to do funny things. Yeah, so that's kind of where what we've been doing is like, yeah. Like, you know, I've been reaching out to some of these open micers that have done really well at, you know, at, on Kill Tony and being like, come on, let's do the show. See if you can come on. And most people, most of the time, they're just, they're not into it. They're just yeah. not. And you know what, dude? That's like, like, first of all, on the West Coast, Kill Tony was kind of like the only way for like a, like a, like an up and coming comedian to kind of get seen. Like, even on the East Coast, you get they have like real ass podcasts and shit. Like if you become a decent like feature act, you can get on real ass podcasts pretty frequently and like get your name out there with Luis J Gomez and Gas Digital and all that. Yeah, there's nothing like that over here. It sucks. It's everybody's too like nah, man. I'm, I want like they want Joe Rogan on, on their podcast or nobody. Yeah. You know, what I mean? or Tim Dillon. Rogan, yeah, and, and, and a podcast isn't going to be successful even if you get a big name like that. It, it podcast, yeah. you want a successful podcast, you got to do different things. It, it, you got to be more intimate with your audience, and you got to even first know yeah. who, who your audience is. Like it, yeah. it, it doesn't work that way, and I don't think a lot of people know that. It, it's funny that you bring up that you've been on Kill Tony because we've actually had a few people that have been. Uh, on Kill Tony, we had Tristan Bowling, Steve Uriz. He's been on it. Oh, nice. uh, oh, yeah. Kelsey, he was on after yeah. after being on our, our show, and then now you. What episode are you on? For oh, jeez. My f <clears throat> so my both of mine happened. First of all, I did one at Antone's on my birthday. I okay. was smashed. Whichever one comes out came out on January 18th. Oh my God, I did the worst joke at the end that like, like I, I, first of all, I did one joke at the beginning that was kind of funny. And then this, and then my second joke, and I, I, I'm going to tell you guys the joke right now. And this never hits anywhere and I can never, and I just love it. I can't get rid of it, which is, I love going to music festivals. I still think that if Albert Einstein went to a music festival today and took ecstasy, I still believe he would think E equals MC squared. And I know it's the shittiest joke ever. And because ecstasy equals, you know, like MC yeah. squared. Okay. So, so I do that, that bombs. And then I forget my last <laughs> joke, you know, which I'm not even going to repeat, but yeah, it's just, you just terrible. The interview went with fun. I mean, it's clearly not, I was clearly inebriated, but then the other one was I got to finally do it. Cause I'd signed up for kill Tony for nearly 
not in a row, but nearly about 25 weeks before I ever got picked. Uh, I'm going to the comedy store. I was going to the comedy store like once to twice a month, on average about twice a month, signing up and for about two years I was doing that. And uh, every Monday, every other Monday, something like that. And yeah, finally, I, I never got up during a live audience. I only got up when it was, they were doing no audience. So, but at least I got to do at least on the main stage over there. And I wasn't even on the main stage. So it was, but it, that one went a lot better. That's, that's I think good. it's like, I think it was like 470 something, but it, it was a decent, it was a decent one though, at least. But yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's, it, I love doing the show, but now it's like back to fucking open mics and stuff like that. And I hate doing it, but I got to do it. Yeah. So you're in the LA area. Yeah, I'm about ten minutes out outside of downtown LA. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm, they, I'm, I'm in like comedy? basically in East LA. What's up? Are they open up comedy yet there? Or is they're just opening slow? it up. Well, yeah. So the you guys may not you guys probably will never heard of it. Okay, but so in the Hollywood they've got you know the Laugh Factory is not open. I don't believe the it might be open. But okay, but the comedy store is open at a limited basis. And it's like it's bangers every night and it's hard to get in but it's like you know it's your tonight's sebastian i'm gonna try to go tonight actually not to perform just go watch it's yeah. like sebastian tonight sebastian maniscalco it's uh he gets 15 minutes and then uh, dude i can't even remember i'll look up the like it was crazy the names tonight you know it's like a regular old comedy store night where you have all the bangers but improv is opening up. Apparently, you have to be vaccinated in order to perform. Also, the Ha Ha Cafe is opening up outside, and they have a little bit going on inside, but it's mostly outside. But they're charging a little too much for the product that they're putting out, I think. Because basically, for the same price, I can go to the comic store if there's tickets. But the Ha Ha Cafe is charging like 25 bucks, and you're like, you're seeing very run of the mill stuff. You'd be seeing like guys like me. So. You know what but I mean? So, do, do some of the open mic places still charge to do open mics? Or it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not, uh, not yeah they're doing big LA yeah. thing. Too. Oh, it's you a big, a, and yeah, go on. Are you close to the, well, you said you're 10 minutes outside of LA. Are you close to the beach at all, though? Like, is it within driving distance? So, we actually yeah. have a friend of the show. Her name is Brittany Haranahan. If you okay. want to look that up, or I can Haranahan. forward all Say that name correctly. I think I did. <laughs> Haranahan. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll check. I'll check her out. But she runs a open mic on the beach. Sick. And it's called Life Is a Beach. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe hit her up if you I'm want. Some time. For sure. Oh, Hell yeah. So I, I'm just yeah like, putting it out there. Friends of the yeah, show. Yeah. So. Hell yeah. I'll, I'm I'm gonna I'm all over it. because right now what's happening is yeah like okay so Bert's back room. Oh, that sounds hot. But, well, <laughs> see the place used to be called Bert's back room. Now it's called Vicky's comedy club or something like that uh -huh. and i made the joke last week i'm like what did bert do to vicky so oh, she's like, uh, whatever she divorce. whatever you did she got a comedy club out of it she was. <laughs> but it's, it's yeah it's the same place so like a lot of these places they have the slotted the slotted.co which is a website that you go to and then people can put in their information and then it'll make you know it makes a slotting category you could do like one hour blocks or 30 minute blocks you can do five minute slots however so people go and sign up to there and then you pay your five dollars for five minutes or ten dollars for ten minutes but you gotta understand too it's like it's all stand-up comedians sitting and watching you too they're all open micers just waiting to get up and like sometimes they care give a shit about your set and sometimes they laugh sometimes they don't care sometimes you know it's just it's very mixed crowd it's not really connect it's not a place to go and like connect with the audience it's a place yeah. to go work your shit out that's it just Get the words out in the right order and make it get your practice on the stage and the mic and then this. So that's great. But there's some other places like, you know, like fourth wall that like they got a little more prestige. And some of these outdoor places that you're talking about, like this place, Life is a Beach, it's hard to find their sign up places, like their sign up sheets, yeah. basically. So it's there. So unless you're part of the, the Reddit group or the fucking Facebook group, it's everything's all spread out now so it's a little bit harder to find and i think people are going like a little low key with it too they're yeah. like maybe had friends that were like oh i don't think you should be doing this uh, you know, pandemic so i'm not sure 
you know so it's been everybody everything's been scattered but i'm getting i'm just getting back into it right now i'm jealous dude all my friends are moving to austin they're literally all moving out there to do stand-up man like and I i'm know- fucking getting some fomo <laughs> I, I know that rogan went out there and like segura and and all them those are they're going out there but it everything's coming back over here it look those people a lot of those people like even tony and red band it yeah. makes sense for them to go because you get an, an, an exorbitant amount of a tax break and as long as you can claim that you're there for 180 days or 181 days or whatever the fuck the actual number is like it's something close to that like if you spend half your time there then you get tax breaks and then you can spend 179 days in los angeles if you want to so it's just it's very much like you if you're an open micer though i if for somebody like me it's not really worth it for me to go only because i've already like i'm in a place now in los angeles where if i go somewhere else and i try to start over again i'm just i'm like it's the same thing you know what i mean i'm gonna be getting the same level gigs here and there at least here i have the connections i live here already i got a car like everything's already here you know and now that it's finally opening back up i think it's worth it for me to just not even think about that i mean i can't even think about that that's not even how, the, how long have you been be doing cheaper that? to live there it would be cheaper but i don't have a job like right now i've got a job oh. here you know i got a nine to five i mean oh, i would gotcha. love it i i was for a little while and i'll answer your question right now mark but i was for a little while you know con- like especially when we were able to work from home yeah you know I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to Texas. I mean, I went and I went for a, a little while and it was fucking awesome and I would love it. And like my, you know, legit, a lot of my friends are there. So, but yeah, but to answer your question, which was, wait, what were you asking me again? How long have you been in COVID? Oh, yeah. Like how long um, have you been in stand up? Yeah, it's like, I'm just, I just passed five years, not too long ago. Okay. So well, I'm still in my, you know, I'm, I, I basically, what I call myself is like, I'm an open micer that calls himself a feature act. So that's, <laughs> that's what I tell people. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, yeah, you know, I'm an open micer, but I call myself a feature. Hey, I mean, we've that's had uh, features on our show though. So uh, oh, yeah. we only had short bus and he's a regular here at stand up live in Phoenix. Like he constantly gets up and he's, he's hilarious. So, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, if I'm talking to comedians, like, and this was actually one of the topics I, I wrote down in my notes to come up to bring up which is like we want to always talk about how okay because joe rogan sets the trend on this joe rogan set the trend on the if you're a comedian even if you've doing, been doing it for one year or 20 years you guys are your peers so like you know the open micers we're all peers it doesn't matter how old you are how much money you're making from comedy you're all doing it you're all peers but i mean that's really not that true only because first of all like you're treated differently no matter what yeah if you're not if nobody don't know you first of all they don't know you that's the first thing so like it doesn't matter but like i try to just unless they're like a legit headliner i don't try to fuck with them like unless they fuck with me first but in always in a funny ribbing way nobody's ever really but like if they're like feature acts you know if they're going on the road with with the headliners i don't give a fuck i'm gonna tell you exactly what i think about you and I'm going to rag on you as much as possible. Because that is the funnest part about going to these things. I used to even just like going to the comedy store just to hang out with the other comedians. Even if I wasn't able to get onto the fucking potluck or for Kill Tony. It's like the most fun ever. Nobody's in their phones. You know, they're all just fucking talking shit to each other. And it go and it's like, yeah, it's the greatest thing, man. It's the f- most fun. That's why I liked kill the Kill Tony chats because there's a lot of like open micers and when you go into voice chat, it's kind of like the same vibe, you know. Now they're all pussies in there, but no, nah, I'm just joking. I'm, all not, my I'm friends. never been a huge what? fan of the voice chat <laughs> with Discord. It's so uh, I don't know. For me, it, it, even being a podcast, it could get toxic. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, it could get very toxic. What, what what kind of stories do you have with any maybe big? bigger Ooh. names or people that you have or maybe you don't want to say their names but what kind of sure. stories you have in that, in that green room or people yeah no have... I, the green room no i don't have any green room stories i've been in a green room i've been in green rooms a handful of times and i mean let's see what's a good one well also too like a lot of times names you can change names to sure identities 
yeah a lot of the times too like i've been there for a lot of like pretty epic shit. like not epic yeah. but i remember i mean i was there for the whole like when bobby lee crashed into sam tripoli's car i was there watched all of it happen and then but like cool. nothing dude nothing really yeah nothing really happens nothing for me nothing's really happened i haven't really got Crazy. that inside much of insider no that much of insider information uh -huh. like <clears throat> couple times oh like okay so at the comedy store so i know okay i got one star you know do you guys know william montgomery yep yeah okay so the yeah. very first time i meet william montgomery or maybe the second time we go we hang out at kill tony he's not i don't think he's a regular yet at this point afterwards we go to this place called the Sycam it's called sycamore tavern and it, there used to be like a comedy thing in the back there called the comedy dojo i think sam helped start that also it's just like a little back room for people to do comedy once in a while whatever <clears throat> so we're just there when we got there the open mic ends already so i'm not i don't do it i'm just so i'm just drinking having fun it's like a monday night and he's with his current girlfriend that he's with now but he keeps calling her his cousin but then they keep making out with each other so i remember that was happening and then fucking the worst thing happened so we're where we go back to his apartment we, we're drinking we're having fun chilling meeting his friends and call it a night and i walk out and literally as soon almost before i order my uber my phone dies okay and i'm like i don't have cash on me my phone dies it's like 4 a.m so i literally walked had to walk i basically i was 18 miles from my house uh, i walked about i walked about 11 of those miles before i was able to find a charger and get you know pay for the pay for the charger and finally by like 11 a.m i made it back what to montebello find, you just find oh some God. like convenience store or something that I just fucking yeah i found like a like most of the stores didn't open the convenience stores i couldn't buy anything and they wouldn't let me charge my fucking phone i stopped in a bunch of them <laughs> and because i needed to use my phone for the fucking for the stupid apple pay not apple but google pay yeah, yeah. i was or at least so get the mad app open right to fucking Dude, order yeah them. i know so then finally like at 10 a.m one of these cell phone shops opened up and i must have just looked like a crackhead just like <laughs> walking like can i use your phone oh my god please and so not your use your phone but charge my phone i got a charge got my fucking uber and you know got home but like yeah like i mean i've met a lot of these comedians and most of them are all really nice i met joe rogan once i met bobby lee once he was kind of a dick but he, i think that's more of like a he was being like a nice dick kind of ribbing at Matt me yeah, that sounds and cool. then uh, but everybody has been super they're all been so nice Sam's been super Sam Tripoli has been nice they've all been fucking really cool so you brought up notes earlier I got on to the to, <laughs> before we got on the show you said that you had some notes uh, about our show and and possibly yeah, yeah, we, yeah, some of our we, previous we, guests so oh I, no I, well I had a, I was listening to a couple of the previous guests one of them was this comedian from Arizona? What is this Krause guy? Oh, that's Short Bus. Yeah. Okay, Short Bus. Dude, that guy. Who is that guy? He's talking about like, oh, I'm not gonna do no fucking meet and greets afterwards. I'm like, who's coming to meet and greet you afterwards, dude? Like, so, but anyway, uh, me, me, I, we're fans. Yeah. Of Short Bus. <laughs> he's a big, he's a big <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark did take pictures joking. with him. I'm but just yeah, joking. I did, I did a picture with him. No. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He's a but, local uh, in here. He he used to constantly be on the biggest radio show that we have here. Oh uh, yeah, fuck. So he's he, like a local guy. He's a yeah, local he, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's but cool. Again, That's like cool. I was telling you I earlier, respect. he gets featured and, and they have him like open up uh, at Stand Up Live on some big names. Oh, on nice. The basis. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm who? Am I? I'm nobody, dude. I'm baiting. Like I'm doing this shit. Like. Like, okay, so I was so happy the other day because, so you know how Dave Landau left Anthony Cumia's show, Compound Media, he left to go be on Louder with Crowder. Okay, so Dave Landau, so that like that same day or a couple, like a couple days after, he posts like, oh, new t-shirts up for sale, blah, blah. I'm like, oh yeah, I've always wanted a Compound Media t-shirt. Oh, wait. And then he, comes back with yeah because i've always wanted a dave sarah t-shirt i'm like you fucking said my name though you motherfucker yeah. Yeah, you right? said my name. <laughs> and it's not me trolling him or hating him it's just like it's fucking bait like baiting some shit you know what i mean what can i do dude 
I, I don't I don't have any juice. I have to do it. No, but I wanted to bring up, yeah. I I was racking my brain fucking and, and and I had an epiphany. And I was like, holy shit, no, I'm the idiot because I'm listening to your podcast on YouTube and I hear just like under the whole podcast, you have like a slight just music going on in the background, just like nice beat. It's a chill song just in the background going. And I'm like, dude, why the fuck? I wanted to be like, I hope you don't play that shit under my podcast, dog. Like I want people to be able to hear this shit. So, but then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, holy fuck though. Like I'm listening to it and I'm thinking it, it's working like a promo now. And I'm thinking, all right, my brain's thinking, all right, it's going to end now. No, it's going to keep going and it's going to end now. And it never ends. And I listen to the whole fucking podcast. You tricked me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got one. <laughs> that's, that, that's, yeah, a that's a whole yeah. that whole uh, that, that, that insurance that insurance company you almost got oh, oh, we, we got you yeah you I'm fucking like, yeah, you know what I mean yeah, you, about? yeah. yeah. you, you almost yeah. got it got you bitch you yeah. almost got it you pulled me in with the fucking fishing net at the end I know, you're kind of ruining some of the podcast magic because we don't do that oh, no. until after the <laughs> oh yeah Shh, don't say that yeah, that's, yeah. Edit it in. what do you guys think about magic uh, like, do you think it's real? Um, Slide of hand. I mean, it's not real. Did you, first of all, did you know that before you get get into your extensive magic careers? Did you know that like the CIA in its original inception that they created a handbook called the CIA handbook that was like eighty percent eighty percent of the book was teaching agents sleight of hand to like administer poisons into drinks and other means of like getting being sneaky basically and learning like the fucking the basics of sleight of hand that was like the and like slight some bomb making basically 20 percent bomb making 80 percent sleight of hand so That's like it just te- was like yeah magic is in the so but if, yeah Mike, if you were a kid if you're a kid and you have a uh, fuck it you're destined for the cia is that what you're saying <laughs> maybe Please. Maybe. Shit. Destin. Send my kids. To all the magic. incels are like, oh my god. Magic. I found my calling. Magic camp. <laughs> what are you in the C- all these fucking CIA it's, fucking now agents. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Ooh. See it? No, it's but gone. the. The nickels are gone. My, my cousin went to pharmacy school with like a guy who was there. We have a place here called the Magic Castle. And it's <laughs> like, a, it's. A, <laughs> that sounds like it's like a LA. legit. Yeah, it's like the like place. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, the fucking magic dildo castle. No, but the but they they it's like you know the most world renowned magicians, and you have to like invent a magic trick in order to be put uh, brought into the magic castle, and you need to be invited to just to go watch and have dinner with them. You got to wear it's like a whole thing. You got to wear a suit and tie and all this shit. Oh wow! But he fucking craziest trick on uh, at their wedding. He did a magic trick. And you're in a fucking, you're in a hall with this really high fucking ceiling. And he, I would, could not believe my, I turned into an eight year old. I mean, he did this trick. I pulled the card. He put it back in the deck. He fucking threw the deck onto the roof, to the roof. All the cards came down except for my card. It's stuck on the wall. It's stuck on the roof, face up, face down. I was fucking amazed. And he didn't tell you how he did it, right? No. Didn't tell me how I did it. Get out of here. Well, that's the whole thing about sleight of hand, right? Like they, they don't want to reveal the secret or whatever. You can't let the Chinese find out. Right? Well, they're too busy playing Chinese checkers, so. Was it Chris Angel? No, man. It was just some fucking guy that works in Redondo Beach now. I was, I was, I was like, like Angel a, Chris. In jail, in, in some fucking backwards. Angel, Angel Christos. And Angel Chris. Like that that Alex Trebek thing from Family Guy. Oh, they, 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 backwards, he fucking disappears. Yeah, and then and that fucking nerd does it on the actual show. Yeah. Oh, and Alex no. Trebek's like the fucking secret word. My which is my name backwards for oh. zero points. Oh, oh my shit. god. Sad. Rest yeah, in poor Alex back. Trebek. Damn, dude, that's a motherfucker that like. Good run. He was alive as I I knew him ever since I was a yeah. child. Yeah, he lived. He like lived our lives. Holy basically. shit! He's been there the you whole time. You don't think yeah. about these people, man. Like, okay, how old are you guys? I'm thirty. I just turned thirty-five. Oh. Yeah, thirty. I'm so 30, like seven. 
this is something I always bring up on podcasts, which is we kind of grew up in like the age of the golden, like the the shitty the bunny yeah. ears. We had bunny no, no. ears and no, no, no. Well, yes, no. yeah, we had bunny yeah. ears. We had VHS tapes, right? Right. We knew what maps were, and right? Then we have phones. Thomas guides. You know what I mean? We have phones and we have internet and like we 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 know yeah, how to we live, learned we know how to live without it. We know how to live with it. Right, but the, golden, I would say right. No, but the uh, we lived through the. Uh, I'm trying to remember what do they call the second movie? The sequels. We lived through the, oh. the shitty sequels. But, oh, yeah. but I loved all the shitty sequels, like Tremors Two. Love. Yeah, too. Never even saw that Tremors One. I saw that one. I saw. Never even one. saw. Tre- yeah. Never even third saw Tremors one. one. Third one is shit. It was years after I saw Pet Detective. It was years after I saw When Nature Calls that I saw Pet Detective. Mm. You know what I mean, yeah. uh, Ace Ventura. Yeah. And then, like, there's so many. There's, I, I used to have all of them, like, in my head. I used to bring up, and I can't remember. No, that was stupid. No, no. That was bad. What about yeah, the next but, one? I don't remember what the next one was even called. Dumb and Dumber 2? There was another really good sequel to a movie that I can't remember. That was, like, Jurassic you Park. know, the first. <laughs> no, no, no. Give me three of those. I'm good at these you know, movie trivias. You know, Keep Kelsey going. has to have uh, Jurassic Park 1 on in the background at all times at his house. Of course. He's just if it's mentioned, he has to go and he has to go watch it and see what scene it's scenes at. And then he'll go see what scene it's at. And then like if it's mentioned again, he'll be like, all right, it's been like 20, 30 minutes since it's been mentioned again. I know what scene is going on right now in my bedroom. And then he'll go and he'll take us into his bed like with his video camera and be like, look, I told you the fuck I can hear the fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex coming from my bedroom. He just has to have it on in the background at all times. Is he always walking around saying, hey, everybody hold on to your butts? Dude, he's, he could probably, yeah, write you a verbatim script for that fucking movie. But, <laughs> and you guys watch any good movies lately? There's nothing really good coming yeah, out. I mean, nothing. dude, I watch- I, you're probably going to criticize me for this, but I oh, thoroughly God. enjoyed Mortal Kombat. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Don't ruin I, it. I was like, I saw it. I had it. You know, I didn't really pay attention too much to it. I thought it was great. It had some funny moments with Kano you're, you're and shit like totally, that. You're totally selling it right now. I, I, no, no. Well, it but wasn't I, paying attention, but I thought it was great. No, but let me tell you something. I was, I thought that the internet would eviscerate it, and the internet oh. loved it. I know, I right? Was so I mean, surprised. There, are, there are some critics with it, but beyond that, it's like, yeah, it's all the fucking hey, first, hey. the first movie's cast members. <laughs> That's the only people who got mad. Oh, what our movie was better, Raiden with the white guy. Raiden yeah, the, I saw yeah. a meme where it was like Raiden from this new Mortal Kombat, and they're like, "No, no, I want the real Raiden." And then it came with the Raiden that was in the the original, essentially uh, Highlander. And they're like, "No, the real Raiden." And then it was just Raiden with a big ass hat. You couldn't see yeah. any. <laughs> so fucking, <laughs> fucking, fucking yeah. Prototypical fucking just the. Uh, Stereotype, beyond guy. stereotype. Yeah. He has like a dental floss covering his eyes and stuff. Like, come on. But they, but they, um, like, fuck. Ah, fuck. I, I lost my train of thought on this one. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, 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 I, I was just surprised at like the reaction it got. Like, I, I, yeah. I thought the internet was going to hate it, but they loved it. I watched the, uh, I went to actually, I went to the movie theaters in Arizona Ooh. before I moved here, in Tennessee. And I saw Kong versus whatever the fuck it is. Kong versus Godzilla. And I knew the movie was going to be shit, but it was not bad because of, you know, it was the first time going to the movies in over a year and a half or whatever it was. And I'm not a big go to the movie fan anyways. I normally watch movies from the house, but it was good to be able to see something on the big screen. And, you know, they had designated seats and you're separated and whatnot, but it was like still like this wasn't the greatest like everyone you know obviously the money was good for them right it was like they they did well did they i guess they did for they they thought i was gonna do like 20 million they did like 60 or 70 million if not more but it's like i don't know well i know my son has watched it at least eight times since it came out (laughs) yeah yeah my son wants to watch it again for sure i'm just i don't yeah i can't i fall asleep i lose interest in anything that's just too much action I, I fall asleep to that wow. shit. Wow. Well, like I'm a huge fucking Star Wars fan, huge Star Wars fan, and I. Oh, how so? Let's. Okay, no, let's I mean, break down. Okay, I'm. Mean, I, I, I can try to take. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty like, good on trivia. 
pretty good. Well, I mean, no, I'm no, I'm, I'm not gonna I don't have that kind of no. Okay. He, here's well, I mean, one like, way. Here's one way to tell, and he might get offended. Out of the original three, okay. what? So you cannot use the original three. What's your favorite Star Wars movie? Rogue One. That's three? not. That's not the. No, other oh. than the original three. Other than the original oh. three. Can't you Rogue, Rogue, Rogue One. Okay. Rogue hey, One. Man. I need is, some explanation. No, yeah. I think I kind of I liked it. I like Rogue One. Oh, I'm gonna, it's a great I, fucking movie. I, I yeah, I, mean, I don't know why people maybe not like it, but I do. I did like that one because it was a beginning and an end. Yeah. In that movie. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's to me, like it literally so had a story. More than that. It didn't open. But it, it didn't but leave it, anything it, open. Yeah. So it, much it, more it, than that. It closed the gap, right? It told you what happened, and it was a beginning and an end. But. <laughs> Great what? fucking analysis of a movie there, dude. What, Hell yeah. What do you What do you think, though? No, Dave, sorry. No, you're not. Under, no, continue. No, I'm serious. But like, you're right. First of all, it does have a beginning and end. It's a one compact movie that like got it all out, which is great. I like. Not that I hate anything. Don't like trilogies, but like, it was looking at, uh, through all of them. Even I mean, Empire Strikes Back. Like, I, I kind of rage baited a little bit and usually say Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time and is yeah. the best. Change my mind. But really, that crown to me has to go to Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back for me is the best Star Wars mm. movie ever made. And then a, Rogue One is a very close second. And it's because, dude, I mean, dude, Rogue One first, like, first of all, they like, they take the story of Rogue One, like whatever it is at the beginning, I don't know. But like, it, it all starts with like, just like how, like, a, like one of the general's feelings like passionately comes out in one of the movies yeah. like you know like many people die trying to get us information and like here's the information you know like uh, like j all that is just comes off of that like that scene basically anyway the but yeah with the whole uh, princess leia i mean the fucking end scene of that movie where vader is just going through all the uh, the rebel alliance is just fucking awesome dude that's the best but oh let me just get back to my point real quick which was I'm a huge Star Wars fan, yeah. and I and just before I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it, but just before Han Solo dies in, in the Force Awakens, just before it's on Han my DVR, Solo, <laughs> it's on my DVR. Fuck, I gotta delete it. Just before, and, and by the way, the, the, those jokes are getting hacky already, guys. So you guys <laughs> can cut those <laughs> out. Sorry. You know, no, Sorry, we're, not we're over that. Not. That, that, was, that was ten years ago. Get telling people jokes are hacky is getting hacky. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Either way, either way I, I like it. Either way, I like it. By the way, I sell hacky sacks, and that's not a joke. I actually work for Do Whammo. You? Yeah, I work for the company that I work for Whammo, which owns frisbee, hacky sack, hula hoop, slip and slide, super ball, all that shit. Oh, sweet! I gotta talk to you offline. Uh, but I, but also too, yeah, I want to send you guys T-shirts and stickers and all this kind of Dude, shit because you guys are cool. Awesome. I'm gonna send you some shit. But first of all. The whole premise of The Force Awakens, the first one, is literally A New Hope, but just different. It's just instead of a Death Star, oh, it's a yeah. planet. Yeah, okay? yeah you're right. And then there's right. the whole X-Wing thing. And I almost fell asleep. I fell asleep during the X-Wing in the movie theater. I fell asleep in the X-Wing, uh, during the X-Wing, you know, ascend on the Death Moon or whatever the fuck it is. And then <laughs> yeah. just before, like, I literally woke up just before Solo dies. I really want to go to the Death Moon. It's the like death a moon, dude. Yeah, it's a great death place to visit. It's yeah, they're just wearing like a fucking like a championship belt. The planet yeah, was just wearing like a championship gonna, belt that yeah. just fucking shoots you lasers. Here, you die. Are you guys wrestling fans? I'm not. I'm just asking. No, no. Dude, sure. yeah, we. When I was yeah, a kid, yeah. I used to watch all. Yeah, 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 let's talk about those days. Oh, I hope, right? like, you, yeah. For me, a little bit after Hulk. For me, it was like I watched pretty much like I'd say like I'd watch like five or six. WrestleMania strong, and then I was done. I think WrestleMania 10 is when I tapped out because I think I got really pissed off that like Goldust became like the Intercontinental Champion uh, or the uh, yeah, or the Heavyweight the Champion. I just really way. hated Goldust. And he was and pretty. Was like, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was above his. He was ahead of his time. You, right. Say. Well, <laughs> do you think that he started a movement with like tranny? Did he start a tranny movement? No, tranny because or you got queen, it, maybe just you queen. could clearly see his piece from his pants. 
So I don't yeah, think he, he was, was really not, trying he to. Was not he didn't. Stuff. He didn't make the whatever Jenner. What he did he make? Yeah, the he, cut. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make. Yeah. Uh, he didn't make the Jenner cut right there. You guys helped Jenner. each other out right there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. We'll get into that in just a second. I don't know how long you guys got to. How long you guys have? But... We like to go yeah. for an hour, but okay. I mean, yeah, no. Yeah, no we're, we're when, good. You guys we're cut good. it whenever. You guys let me know. But like the yeah, the, I, I mean, I stopped when that happened. But yeah, now Caitlyn Jenner is fucking running for governor. You, you got yeah. like a few kind of, I don't know, you want to call them celebrities, but like Jenner running for governor. There's a, a real me estate Kevin. guy. I follow me. Kevin Papp. So I actually messaged Kevin. I haven't gotten a response back yet, but I messaged Kevin. And I said, I'll fucking do anything you want for your campaign, doggy. I've worked on three campaigns, actually, for the city of Montebello. All three of them won. Two of them were for city council. One of them was for school board. And, and so I'm like, I, I, before I got into stand up and stuff like that, I wanted to like really get into like politics. So I'm like very politically uh, driven. driven, not driven, but like very, like I'm awesome. very involved. My brain is very involved with like current events and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I just like, I couldn't even come on today because of what happens, what's happening in Israel. Like, uh, oh my God. But like, but I am Armenian. So that kind of stuff, I have family over there and stuff like, no, not just tell. Israel. But I had dick. <laughs> hey, bro. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. That's I like you guys. <laughs> oh, we, we try. We try. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's it. I like that. Well, Hell actually, yeah. you know what? It, it, not to derail what you were just going on with, but you know, we Which do have are. questions that we typically ask yeah. on our podcast. So. Um, go. I got a handful of them. I'm sure as you've listened to some of our shows or episodes, uh, you kind of know where these are going to go. Let's see. Well, let's start with a ba real basic one. Okay. What is your favorite adult site? X videos. For real? Okay. Mm -hmm. I got I got it all. I got everything saved there and stuff like that, too. I got it all like on my That's profile. Good. It's a lot of it's a, there's some cuck videos in there. There is a lot of BBC stuff. porn. A lot, a lot of Asian, of not a lot of Asian, but a lot of Latina, big booty Latina porn. I'm, I'm into that kind of stuff. I'm not really into anal. You're not gonna really find a lot of anal in there, but I like a big hammer, whether well, it be on. a white guy or a black guy. I like that you're an open book. I like this. Yeah, no, okay, hold on. And before we go on to the next question, let me ask wow. you guys this, which yeah, is, right. please, like if you're stuck on a stranded island, who's one videography, which porn star would you choose? Oh, that's Complete a videography wow. you have. And I'll tell you mine at the end. Uh, and mine yeah. is not going to be a girl's. Ooh. Oh, okay. And you know why? Because I like variety. So you pick a male Mix it up. with a big old hammer. Okay. It was Lexington Steel or Dan Danny D's a good one. Danny D's a good one. Danny D's fucked a lot of hot bitches. Wow. So if you get all of Danny, but he's also fucked a lot, a couple dudes, which is weird. But if you take Danny D's videography, I mean, you're going to get big dick and just array of Oh, so we're just, we're just taking their their complete I videography. Just, they're, they're, yeah. Just their, their, yeah, you're taking their compilations. Okay. We're, not, comp we're not taking compilations. them. Okay. Thanks yeah. for oh, yeah. oh, I see what you mean. I was all like, wait a second. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Uh, that I meant like, yeah, you're stranded on an island. You only have one porn star's videography. This is a yeah. Good site, by the oh, way, that's yeah. for a bit on this site. Yeah, yeah. X video is <laughs> pretty. Just... Yeah, I'm looking through. Dick. Like, oh, what I want to know is why did you make a profile? Who makes it? What kind of person makes a profile? Yeah, that is a, that is a good question. No. I'll tell you why. Because yeah, like, a, uh, like an emoji for your, your phone or no. your device or whatever already saves what you've been looking at. So I just, yeah, it's it, this is makes it. I mean, it's very simple. I just made an exhale account because that's my gamer name. And I just were and this way, like if you like a video, you just hit the like and it goes yeah. into your like list. And I got about 30 pages so of like lists. So then you can so get it. Now I can just... like, so then you have the ones that you always liked, right? Yeah. Cause, cause yeah. You, yeah. Cause you can get the mixture of ones that you're like, oh, come yeah. on. You have to, you don't have to go to two or three pages down. And it's a good thing I didn't do that on Pornhub because they kiboshed a bunch of, uh, they kiboshed a bunch of videos off of there that aren't yeah, uh, verified. They did. They did. And I like how we, there was so much other information you could have possibly looked up on your phone to maybe like help the show, but instead, the only thing you ever did look up on your phone was the porn site I brought up. So next question. <laughs> we didn't answer yours. Wait, wait, oh, yeah. Answer so your yeah, videography, you, go. You first, Mark, if you could think of one. 
I have an old school one, but it's just because yeah. that is all I could think of. It's a dude really hate for you, Dave. Yeah. No. Peter North, what? huh? Yeah, that's I what met it was. Him once. Yeah. And that's Ron Jeremy. Old. Have you? Mm hmm. I met Peter North at a car wash. He had a fucking Ferrari. And I met, uh, what was the other one I said? Ron Jeremy at the Rainbow Room, famously. At the nice. Rainbow Room. Like just fucked up in front of the Rainbow Room. Almost every single know. weekend he was there. In I don't cuffs know if I or not? Want... <laughs> no, not in cuffs. No, not that time. No. I haven't heard, like, what happened? Like, I he's, heard he was in he, trouble, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think he's like, like, is like is in jail? I think he's because, in jail. Yeah. Is there, I haven't heard anything new about, like, if it's been done or, like, dude, these things went away, rape, right? Anything rape, anything rape related, like, you're in, yeah, you're in, either you're, you're in, in jail yeah. or, like, the, the fucking thing happened. Like, it takes years. It's not yeah. like, a, oh, yeah. it's so not like a, wow. And I'm sure too, like when you're, especially when you're like accused of rape, like depending on, I don't really know. I would assume there's some kind of correlation here, but there's probably some porn companies too that will like kind of mm -hmm. back him a little bit to make sure that like he doesn't fall victim to like a porn crime. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, so they get. Uh, so they might make sure so they don't. Might be you like, know, so there like might be slowing someone. it down. Could be yeah. Yeah, the, money, the money. You never is... know. I don't, I'm just that saying is, off of a, a good, hypothetical. That's a good that's a good you know what I do know, though? I would definitely not bring his videography. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it kind of grows at the end there. It's old. Yeah. That's a lot, of, a lot of bush. A lot of bush. Yeah, I never was into the Ron Jeremy stuff. Uh, there, there is a couple porns that, like, I'm trying to remember. Like, a couple porns from my childhood that I, like, get nostalgic about and like spend hours trying to find on the internet and still have not been able to but uh, i have successfully found a couple of them that i was like oh yeah, yeah remember dude that one. That's yeah, what, dude. what's one thing that does it for you oh that's a good it doesn't one. even have to be like in a video or anything like that just yeah. like in life uh, well store. like this okay this is gonna be a little candid but uh, so like that when i was you know, there's some triggers in my head from like high school and college and even a little before high school, maybe even that yeah. like that, like certain things will trigger off in my head. Like, you know, like if a girl's ass or like me grabbing a tit or like, you know, like very mundane things that like I've, you know, I've had sex with girls, but like there's these like weird triggers of like, mm. you know, like a yeah. chicken yoga pants, like rubbing up against me will trigger some shit from like high school. And that'll just right. like fucking I'll pin a dude down and fuck him at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh. All right. I was in the band too. And like so like I was in the band and I was in the drum line and we used to share a bus with the drum line and the drill team. And what we would do is this the drum line like would uh, sh don't the drum line would be let him go. <laughs> the drum line and the drill team. Yeah, I mean, this is already and so so like we would the drum line would sit in the back and the drill team would sit in the front. And as soon as the bus started moving, we would try to switch positions through the bus. And the bus, like the bus drivers had to pull over a couple times. But like, just imagine like the first half, of the rows have to get to the last half and the last half to get to the first half. Oh, and they're just climbing over shit. And you're just grabbing ass and tits and just, you got pussy in your face and you're only, you know, you just love it. You're wow. sweaty. Band kids I missed out on so much not doing band in high school. Dude, band was... What kind of crazy band oh, stories man. do you have? Oh, Cause, dude. Because oh. I think of, you know, Shit. you know, the one big band story everyone knows is, you know, from American Pie. Right? Yeah, you, you, stuck a float up my pussy. Right. There was so, that, I mean, and I was in band right. at that time. Okay. <laughs> and, and literally, I think, and I th literally think that we just, as a nation, just got off of that meme like not that meme but like that saying like if yeah. somebody says this one time nobody no longer says at band camp yeah okay yeah. but for a long time yeah that's all that's i mean all, that's 20 all years hear. almost we we're hear. talking people were just if you ever said this one time somebody would be like at band camp you know so but um some weird ass shit. well <laughs> i remember i was in the drum line i remember the trumpets being Fucking all of them are just bisexual, probably. Okay. I don't know. Like it was all every single that... one of them was bisexual. Like they'd have these weird fucking like sleepovers and shit mm. where like, you know, oh dude, I got a great story. Oh, this is so mean. 
Okay. It's okay. Don't say names. Or no, 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 no. I'm not going to say it. I don't remember this bitch's name. No. Right. So when I was a freshman, there was a senior clarinet player, and she was a big girl. Not just wide, but yeah. tall. Okay. She was probably like, you know, That's she was funny. solid. She was, I think she was Samoan. She was nice. probably like legit, like 5'9, you know, as a senior in high school, 5'10, pretty big girl. Right. Apparently, she was like tiny in in like her freshman year and she got this little tattoo on her back and when she became a senior the tattoo on her back just looked like just random lines like that covered her so whole weird. that just it didn't resemble anything it was just a line here a, a like a a fucking just a squiggle here a little bit of green a little bit like it was just terrible but yeah, she was always a fucking cunt to me, so I don't care. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> but like we would, they, they had initiation that had to get that stopped so, after a while. So they put dog asked, food on me. When you asked her to prom, she said, oh. "Have seen her?" Yeah, dude. She stuck a fucking bazooka of her. No, but uh, yeah, like we did initiations. We, I, when I was a senior, was like one of the last years they were able to do it, and I never did any of that gross shit. And like when I say yeah. gross shit, like. They would just do food stuff like they would take you out into the field and like they'd put sardines on you and ketchup and like just a bunch of food shit like just stupid shit like that. But what I made my boys do was like funny shit like like one guy one of you guys goes and buys this loaf of bread and then the other one like takes his shirt off runs in there after he pays for it, you grab the bread spike it on the ground and be like touchdown and just run out like just stupid shit like that yeah, or like yeah. go to the gay the only gay bar in my city montebello go to the only gay bar and like get a, ba a box of matches or a, a, a book of matches that says chico's on it just stupid shit like that we'd make them do not none of that gross shit ah uh. fucking marshmallow in between your butt i have a story i got one last story too which is when i was in college oh, we did, I was rushing for a fraternity, which I didn't end up joining in the end. And there was a sophomore who was, I don't want to make fun of him because he was definitely mentally ill. And so there was, I don't think he understood the, the concept of the marshmallow obstacle course thing. Cause he's watching all the freshmen do the obstacle courses. Right. And if you drop the marshmallow out of your butt, you have to like, go back to the start and then you you put the marshmallow back and you, you put another marshmallow in your butt and you do it but every time the fucking every time a marshmallow would fall on the floor you go eat it oh and like we kept on being like stop eating the you stop win, eating buddy. the, the, the butt marshmallows dude wow. and so finally like Were i think they ended up with, what was he I mean, I was on the spectrum. I mean, I don't know. All right, what other questions no, no, you got? No, I mean, no, like, what, what was he in the band? I mean, that's the oh, percussions. Oh, no, he wasn't no, in the band. band camp? Oh, no, 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 this was college already. This yeah. was, I went to Cal Poly, so this was already, like, later. But, yeah, this was, like, I wasn't in the band over there. Yeah, this was just, like, if you're trying to join. If you're on the spectrum and you're playing an instrument, I'm like, you probably got to be. <laughs> it's probably pretty good at it, man. Percussions. <laughs> or, or you're, you're just, like, like amazing. Savant. Like, you're, like, yeah. the, like, the savant, like, like, the chair one, right? Imagine somebody with, like, Asperger's or something. Or, like, not Asperger's, yeah, but like, some like... just annoying mental illness. Just, like, playing a drum all day. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Not music to your ears. Dude. Right? It's like right, sound like we, little Rick. Yeah, go on. We do have a running skit on the show. Uh, not a skit, but just like a you know a running thing on our show that we find pretty hilarious. We have in the past brought on guests from Australia, and we have been kind of debating. We really started way back when. I'm trying to figure out if Australia is real or not. When we start to ask some of these people. It, it kind of gets questionable and one says he's a rapper but we really never know he I actually did also say he met ron jeremy which is so I, is that real or not we don't we, who knows but my question is mm. if flat earth theory is really a thing right do you would do you think that australia is real yeah, okay australia is real because <laughs> I know that there's, I know a fucking ton of dirt bags that live over there and idiots and fucking losers. I know some, personally, I know okay. some really cool people who live there too. And I actually really like Australian women. 
but the if let me tell you let me tell you something fuck australia for right now antarctica is the one you got to be looking at dude why Ooh, that who one's cares about real. who cares about australia what is this fucking this is you're you're trying to be an australia shill and try to like take everybody's focus off of the real fucking flat earth Ooh. question which is why is antarctica surrounding us around all the edges well hold on yeah so hold on. Does yeah. that mean you are a flat earth believer? No, I'm not. Oh, no, okay. I'm not I a flat earth kid. believer. <laughs> oh my God. I was hoping that we'd add one. I'm not a flat earth believer. But I, I get where you're going. I get it. This is my God's, this is the God's honest truth about yeah. all this for me. And then we're going to get into Antarctica in just one second. But if I fucking hope, I hope to God on all things everything like on all things like just holy like i hope that the earth is round and a sphere i really hope so because if it's not then, then we're all fucking idiots huh? then i don't fuck then i don't know what then and then, then Kyrie, there's literally Kyrie nothing Kyrie to believe in anymore the world. yeah yeah the flat earth. there's nothing so so my thing is i really want it to be a sphere i really hope that it is and yeah. most of the evidence i've heard says it's a sphere right right i agree I agree. Have you been watching any of the new shuttle stuff with Elon Musk going into space and NASA? Like, have you been watching any of the videos that they're doing live and things like that? Sure. I've seen all the like the bullshit little things that they talk about. The mouse. I don't believe in that. I think that's ice. Oh, no. Those just, things too. Just like, even like the docking or releasing. Oh. Like, they just transferred people from the space station. Because in the video, I mean, you can see Earth in the background. Right. In the video. like, Which is it, why it's like. Why go through all that trouble if it's not real? I mean, I, it's got to be real. In the video, it, it clearly, you know, sh foreshadows or I don't know how you, it, it, the imagery shows that the Earth is, is spherical. It just, right. Yeah. So I, it, it, unless the, the Earth I, is. I, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing for a flat Earth. Believe me, I'm not arguing for a flat Earth. I wouldn't even know where that argument begins. The Maybe only interesting argument I've ever heard about flat Earth is the idea of like how are our planes actually fly because they do fly in a weird like they do land in odd places that like you would think you, they wouldn't have to land like when they go certain places like he made one compelling point and i know that to semi be true because i know people who actually went to greenland or something like that and or new zealand i think it was and so they made the same argument about like why they had to stop here and go there. It didn't make sense to me, but it, it could be other, it could be other security reasons, like reasons like where they don't want you going into like certain over certain parts of China or something, yeah. you know, it could be there that be type of stuff too. Space. Yeah. There yeah. might be some space that's just off limits. Like but, that, or, that or gas. Maybe they but Antarctica, gas. that's an open book. I don't fucking know what's going on over there, dude. There's some crazy shit going on over there because I, I that's news. the kind of stuff that i love break my favorite news. conspiracy sorry news. i didn't mean to cut you off go on no no break that news What's no that, that was actually one of our questions though too is okay it, go go what, your, what is your favorite conspiracy mm -hmm. so oh, antarctica yeah. I, i'm yeah. very intrigued now i want to hear this me too well well okay well my my favorite conspiracy really is about giants like the whole giant all the giant stuff oh, about like God. the giant bones about the giant the giants that lived here in the past Where you watch the show bones? Do I watch what? The sh the show Giants. Like no. I've so seen there's a giants. show called Giants? Yeah, so there's a show. I don't know if they've renewed the season or not, but they they, they have a couple seasons out and basically it's a, it's some archaeologists that are looking specifically for giant culture. They go out and look for giant bones. They found some bones that could could or could not be Explain. giant people. Yeah. Yeah. Backing their theory. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's worth a look. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. It's the most fun out of all of them because there's stuff from the United States that's interesting, stuff from overseas. There's that one story about the Iraqis possibly like killing a giant. I don't know necessarily believe believe all that shit, but like like recently with like in like 2002 or something like that. But like there's like even Arizona has a pretty rich giant culture there. I would think so because but one of the first like one of the first ways I got introduced to it was regarding this guy his name is uh, ge kincaid and he has this place called kincaid's cave and then this is a legit thing from the arizona gazette in 1908 or 6 that this guy ge kincaid he fucking he he strolled down the uh, the colorado river from a couple states out 
ended up in the Grand Canyon, found the cave, said that there was like full, they said that this cave was like, it looked man-made and it had like, cause it had perfect geometrical warehouse looking and warehouse looking interiors, how it, it was explained later. But like gymnasium sized buildings is what they're saying. All kinds of like Egyptian style artifacts, you know, like little trinkets, obelisks, little things like that. And apparently the way the story goes is that they were doing excavation for the Smithsonian that they possibly took found and took giant's bones from there. And then when somebody from the Gazette asked them and stopped them, they said that they were with the Smithsonian, yada, yada. The Smithsonian has never like said that this person is true. They always deny it. They said that giant bones don't exist. We don't have them. But there's there is this sort of like culture and I guess conspiracy around the Smithsonian covering up a bunch of shit like this, which also goes hand in hand with colleges like Harvard and Yale that get money funded through them to lie about research, in my opinion, lie about research and lie about uh, other shit. things. You fucking laughing over there, but I'm telling you, motherfucker, yeah, it's real. No, it, it, but, I'm no, laughing because it, the, the possibility yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm laughing because it's plausible. Of it. Yeah, it it, it's plausible. That's the reason I'm laughing. So yeah. what's with our Antarctica? Again, okay, Antarctica. Well, I mean, the, the, besides all the Nazi stuff, like there's a, the whole thing about the Nazis oh, going they, to Antarctica. They, had, they were going up there to basically set up a base. Yeah, kind of down there. there. Oh, down there. Yeah. Sorry. Arctic Circle's at the top. Antarctica's at the bottom. I'm not good at maps. So here's another interesting thing too. Is like, well, first of all, there is a legit, and you can look it up on Google Maps. It's right there. There's a legit island right off the coast of Antarctica called Rothschild yeah. Island, and it's literally a mm -hmm. stone throw away from Argentina. So like, even people don't really know. I guess don't. I guess not really talked about that much but like lots of really rich people go to antarctica all the time like with their yachts it's like a it's like a destination like there's pictures of 100 million dollar yachts chilling in like the like you know, gulfs of the antarctic where it's green and lush and beautiful and there's like no there's nobody for a hundred miles hundred thousand i don't know how many miles thousands of miles yeah and so like you and you're basically if you're basically like a like i said like a stone's throw away from the southern tip of chile and um argentina so so like this whole thing about the nazis, the nazis you know going to argentina yep. they had basically basically had a base in antarctica but one of the very interesting things that i love which was wikileaks reported this thing like probably like 15 years ago that they uncovered this document from like the mid 1970s where they were, and this is where the shit starts to get off, goes off the rails, where conspiracy theories, you know, where people, where I usually start to lose people on the conspiracy theory. Right. Which is, they, there was a shipment for seven tons of penguin pineal glands that came from Argentina that was shipped to New York in like 1979 or something like that, or 74. Okay. And it's on WikiLeaks. You know, it's a pretty legit, you know, uh, source that, that it provides. And, you know, one of the theories is that they use these penguin pineal glands. They're like, they harvest them in, in Antarctica and they bring the pineal glands back to the United States so they can use it for adrenochrome, which is like mm. a fucking, it's like, it's like yeah. a drug that like makes them live longer and either makes them live longer or helps you talk to God or talk to aliens or see the mechanical elves. Who the fuck or knows, dude, penguins. but like. These are the fun ones for me because now, unfortunately, all conspiracy theories, and I think this is also part of the thing that like is manufactured in within the conspiracy theory realm is yeah. now anything can be possible. Well, no, it's not that everything leads to child pedophilia now. Uh, you know what oh, I mean? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that like one, yeah, when you said the, the and, adrenal claim, that's that for the, whatever that that's what exactly. I, I've heard that conspiracy. Exactly. The adrenochrome, yep. but then it always everything leads to oh they're doing it because of satanic rituals or they're doing it because of child pedophilia, and it's like all right now every single fucking conspiracy theory leads to fucking child pedophilia or child sacrifices, you and like what? now and nobody believes you now because you yeah. went off the rails. Yeah, maybe the penguin one is real because you don't know. That's what I mean. You don't know which exactly. one is right, right? It could yeah. be the kid one or it could be the penguin one. Who knows? That leads me to believe that. The 9/11. Some wait, go ahead. Buildings, the, the buildings in 9/11 went down 
to destroy child porn on servers. Oh, wow. That's a one? I haven't heard that one. Is that one? Well, if they're Holy all good, shit. Then, then, that's what you're that's saying. That, like, everything pretty ends up, it, that's the quiet. end path, right? See, well, that's the end path. Like, if that's the end path, but see, what happens is you you say all this legit shit, like, oh, do you ever fuck Tower 6, look at Tower 7, or whatever the yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I don't really know too much about 9 11. I, I never really got, like, I just, there was so much. I just never really got into it. Yeah. I've asked people like what the leading thing is, but like the, yeah, like the, it's like you could talk about all these things like all oh, this and that and like how, you know, whatever your theories of 9-11 are. And then in the end, you fucking, you tell them, yeah, and it was all to crash uh, child porn servers. People are like, ah, oh, okay, here we go. Okay, yeah. forget it. No, Everything you said is garbage now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's. I am gonna. I'm gonna look more into that uh, Antarctica thing, though. But one more, one yeah, last thing about good. the Giants, which is uh, a historical. So that, that's part your about biggest it. one, right? That's that's the one you. That's that's the one I love the biggest. most. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I love the most, and like, and one thing too is because like, there's actually like, interesting history that kind of goes along with it in the sense that like, so. <clears throat> we all have okay apparently there's like this race of like the red-headed giants are like the main ones that's why they think like every single person has a, a red-headed recessive gene in their body okay every single so that's why every race can technically have a redhead so like so what would happen is they let's say an italian man you know is married to a blonde woman or whatever and they have a child with a fuck with a bright red hair what do they think? They think that the woman cheated. Yeah. So they'd brand her with like the scarlet letter the, for the red, or they call it the redheaded stepchild, and they always beat the fuck out of it, right? Because they th they would think that it's like a fucking, they think that it was like an adulterer. You know what right, I mean? Right. So, but like not knowing that, oh shit, no, like literally every single human on this planet has the redhead recessive gene in them, and it could just pop out of nowhere. And wait, and then and then those turn into giants. So, so all the giants genes. are redhead. And then they turn into fucking giants. They just oh, grow out, that, out your pussy, just full grown giant out of your pussy. Wow. It's crazy. So, what? Science. Where in the timeline of Earth, right? Yeah. Where do you think that was, though? Giants. Yeah. I, it depends on, like, the whose theories you want to call bullshit the most or the least, which is like, there's the whole, there's the, what's that guy's name? Zachariah Sitchin. He's like the guy who says that like the Anunnaki came from another planet like 40,000 years ago or 50,000 years ago and they took like nomads and Neanderthals or whatever and they sped up the genes and they put, you know, they turned us into the Nephilim or the Nephilim were like the giants. They yeah. used us as slave labor, but they created us, you know, they gave us the fucking, this is where the whole pineal gland bullshit comes into play too because it's like an important part of your brain that they say anyway. So they gave us like the, the acorn of life. You know, there's lots of ancient symbolism. Like even if you look at Gobekli Tepe, which is like the oldest, one of the oldest structures that we've seen, it's outside of Turkey, which is right next to Armenia. And like they, they found a structure that's like, you know, it's 12,000 years old and that's 10,000 BC. That's like 5,000 years before the pyramids of Giza. Yeah. And it's like, okay. <laughs> so, so what happened for all that fucking time, dude? Like. So even if you, and that's, so so this is where Graham Hancock's theory comes in, not the aliens shit, but the Graham Hancock's theory is like, okay, well, maybe we've actually been here for like 80,000 years. We just keep fucking killing ourselves or like nature keeps killing us. There's the theory of like, you know, the explosions erupt everywhere, melts all the good shit and everybody dies or like, or the theory is like, that froze over. Yeah. And the age. So. Or the sun did some shit. Do you think that it's a real possibility that humans and dinosaurs could have been at the same time had they been giants? Oh, good one. Oh, fuck. That's a great question, actually. I never thought about that. Or do you think and we just got giants? shorter and shorter? Yeah. Because we had to? I See, mean, that's, we, that's fucking interesting, that's too. Because evolution, yeah. maybe. Yeah. See, or that's fucking be interesting, too. Because Well, yeah. I mean, well... I mean, smaller. yeah, I guess de-evolution is a form of evolution regardless, true, true. but, but you're evolving with your yeah. atmosphere, your surroundings. Yeah. I mean, I guess one of the, one of the reasons why they say there's like all the plants were so big and shit like that's what allowed 
lizards and stuff to get that big was because there's so much like carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. I don't know how that fits into all this, but I, I never fucking even thought about that. About That's like amazing. maybe we were giants during the dinosaur time, but like and and would, as a child, be, sorry, what? Go ahead. No, 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 go on, go on, go on. I was like, wouldn't there be more? Like I know the sis, Smithon, Sismo, Smithsonian. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Obviously, hit bones, right? But wouldn't there be more bones if there were more bigger people out there? I mean, obviously, maybe we haven't found them, or once we find them, oh, or maybe we just say they're fucking dinosaurs. Maybe not as big as it will. I mean, if you think about it, population's never been as big uh, that yeah. we know of as right. it is now. So yeah. maybe not. I don't, I don't, yeah. I mean, yeah, lizard. Like, like, what about lizard people? What if like That's dinosaurs true. weren't even dinosaurs at all? They're just fucking just lizard people like it was fucking just giant lizard people but they're just yeah. like they're just like smart and shit they're not yeah. dumb oh, they're just shit. like they're tiny they're t-rexes but they're just like for the briefcase yeah shit let me get let me get two smokes i'm a, well, so what, a was big that, what was that one show in the 90s where they had the baby dinosaurs. yeah dinosaurs, <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> just watch that nah, see yeah that's what it really was i so love were, that they, show they were not the time 30 years yeah. ago making that show I love the baby. Dude, I was watching some back, some behind the scenes shit of that, where they actually used to make like the, they used to fucking make that shit out of like makeup and silicone and like, no you way, know, really? They, yeah, I mean the people are wearing the costumes and they're fucking, yeah. they got robots wow. and shit and they got to put the makeup on. Oh, dude, crazy shit, wow. love it. Good shit. All right, so last question so we can start to Hell wind yeah. down. Uh, yeah. This one, I, I really like this question just because I, I think it's starting to throw off some of our guests. Ooh. So if shit, where'd it go? Oh shit! Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. My battery's about to die. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we went too long. <laughs> I hear he's wearing he's wearing uh, Crocs. Oh, is that what Crocs sound like? Damn, I wonder if that was why. Were you wearing Crocs? My video kept up? turning off. It's because it was. You hear your Crocs? Were you wearing Crocs? No, no, I'm not wearing Crocs. All right, sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> I, got, I got my shit kickers in. All right, here we go. Nice. All right, let's hear it. Last question. So what is a piece of information that you have learned that feels illegal to know? I think it kind of goes along with everything we've just been talking about this that last half hour yeah, for too. Real, basically. Well, <laughs> I am Armenian, so I know a lot of I know a lot of legal ways to get out of I know a lot of like Things. little legal loopholes just from being cuz over here we call them Armenians will call it an insurance gords, which means insurance job. Yeah. So like mm. what I've learned from these people is that <clears throat> I like, that, I like how you place the blame. I like that. From these <laughs> what people. I, what I learned from these from people. those guys. Yeah. Is that if you're paying insurance for something, you better fucking exploit it. You better not let that money wait. Like, you got to learn. You got to look at all the little shit that that shit pays for and get your money's worth or else you're losing money, dude. Mm. So, like, you got car insurance and, you know, you got a little... Yeah. You know, a little uh, you get it. You know what I'm saying, dude? I get it. I get or like it. homeowner insurance, all that shit. Like Burn take advantage down. of your insurances. That's my piece of information. But like in the spirit of the game, like to be funny. That was good. That was good. That was like here. That I'm gonna. Was good. Uh, Even though that was probably real, but that was good. This isn't illegal, but like I'll give a little uh, comedy store, little comedy store insight right here for your listeners. Yes. Which is. When things open back up to full capacity and everything's running smoothly at the comedy store and nobody's worried about, you know, masks or how, how, whatever, there's an area of the comedy store called the sanctuary, which is where all the comedians hang out and they smoke their doobies and they smoke their cigarettes and they bring their bitches back there. And there's the main hallway that leads from the outside to the, there's the entrance to the belly room. That's the called the outside of the patio. That hallway is nicknamed Fallujah. Okay, because it's just like just chaos in there all the time. You see comedians, like famous comedians, you know, like you'll see like I, I'm you see Dice, you know, Drogan, all those people. Yeah. So if you're walking down that hallway, if you look to your right, just after the bathroom, there's the like the secret bar 
and the kitchen if you walk through the double doors and don't pay attention to anybody don't look at anybody just walk straight to the back to the left you will end up in the sanctuary with the likes oh, of don barris and uh, tony hinchcliffe and all that and you'll just and you'll and as, as long as you don't get kicked out you're there you're chilling dude oh, shit. that's my only piece that. of that. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta go to la and do that yeah like people are gonna be like why the fuck would you tell us people who like these guys? yeah who are these guys <laughs> but that's, so, so that is my, my little tip that's good that's a good one and what you guys you said docking earlier, and I thought, well, I'm uncircumcised, so I can actually dock one of you motherfuckers, I bet. Oh, there yeah. you go. I'm, I'm an anteater, baby. Anteater. I think, ant -eater. I, I nice. think maybe we, we talk about that too much now, Scott. We gotta uh oh. Down a little bit. About an circumcision, circumcision has been a topic of conversation here. No, I need to come on, more. This has been yeah. the first time. Okay, great. Oh, we talk about docking all the time. Which yeah. is, well, I know, but that's. But have you ever had a guest own... that can actually do it? Yeah, uh, that's true. That oh. is true. We got the bag. We, we found the first. I got the baggage. Up. Yeah. Back there up. we go. Let's Hell take, yeah. Let's take this off the camera. Let's. Uh, hey. Let's, yeah, let's talk off camera. Yeah. <laughs> you have anything that you want to drop or promote before we let go? Yeah, I'm gonna send you guys some t-shirts. I have t-shirts. This comment is good for the algorithm. I've got djenden.net. I do podcasts every Thursday. It's like I said. It's about either legal or illegal drug use conspiracies comedy it's whatever it is and then every wednesday it's a more wholesome show i do with my co-host corky from the ding dong show comedy stains on wednesdays just go to djenden.net you'll find it comedystains.com i love you guys you guys are the shit thank you for having me on the show dude i love it you guys gotta come on my show now yeah, yeah. definitely we will hell yeah Our amigos out this has been the Amigos PC. Make sure to like, subscribe, and review us on all your podcasting platforms. Visit us at AmigosPC.net for our entire library of content and Amigos merch. Till next time, adios.